Joining us now are some representatives of the uh, AU Foundation. We have Mary Vellucci and Jason Lanigan joining us. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, congratulations to you guys. Uh, earlier this year, the AU Foundation uh, finally got your 501c3 status. You must be thrilled about that. Um, what does having a 501c3 status allow you to do? It, it allows us to go and get more corporate sponsors. Um, a lot of the times for tax purposes, they want to see that your 501c3 status so we've been reaching out to the community with um, bigger businesses for cash donations and other non-monetary donations as well. Now, earlier uh, this year in, in August, you had your first ever picnic at Friendship Park. Look back on that. What was that like? That was pretty good, actually. Uh, the turnout was great. There was about 100 people came to that one. We were expecting 200, but with the weather being so nice, <laughs> you know, everybody had their own thing going on. It was a it was a great weekend, so we understand that. But it was still a really good turnout. We had a lot of people come together. Um, Knights of Columbus, Trevor. No, not Knights of Columbus. Masons. Masons, the Freemasons, Trevor. Oh, nice. Came out and, man, the girl, that was the hardest job that we had. <laughs> it was very hot and he was there <laughs> the entire time doing that job. Yeah, I can imagine. And you had uh, our local favorite magician roaming the grounds, Anthony Grappito. Uh They just seem to love him. Yes, Anthony is one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I used to teach Sunday school with his aunt. Mm. So I got familiar with his name, and I roped him in years ago when we used to do our events at the Knights of Columbus. And the kids were just amazed. And every year he gets better and better. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really impressive to see, and it's that up-close magic, too. Yeah, and so you have some other events planned throughout the year. Coming up in a few weeks is the Trunk or Treat event. Now, last year I was there. It was really great to see. It, it was at the United Methodist Church in downtown Lake Orion. I, a lot of people were involved. I saw the police department was there. Um, this year, it's not going to be in the same location, so how can people find the Trunk or Treat event this year? Well, we have it advertised on our website, ausnf.org, and that'll have our, our flyer with all the details and information, but it's gonna be at Friendship Park this year. And we have a lot of people that usually wanna participate, but the event changes locations, but I think Friendship Park is gonna be our trunk or treat. <laughs> That's awesome. What can someone expect? And, and does it cost anything for anyone to take part? Oh no, this, I started doing these as a way for me to give back. So it's all a, a free family fun event for our special needs kids and they get to bring their siblings along with them instead of our kids being dragged mm -hmm. to other events. So. Now in the video we just saw there are cars lined up and the trick-or-treaters go from car to car. Who's driving these cars? Who's providing the candy? Oh, all the local businesses and parents from our community. They all want to get involved. And they provide the candy and everything? Yes, they decorate their car or they just dress up and they provide the candy to all these kids. And then we have on inside where I always provide food because everyone loves to eat. That's <laughs> true. Sure. So we have food and crafts and little entertainment stuff that go on. Oh, that sounds like a great event. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, what else do you have planned this year? Is there a holiday-themed uh, event coming up at the end of the year? Um, yes, we're going to be participating in the Lighted Christmas Parade oh, for the okay. first time ever. So we're going to do an inside event at the United Methodist Church because they block off the roads, so we have to have somewhere to go to keep warm. And then we're going to be participating in a float in the event. That's great. That's such a great event. I remember going back to the days where uh, I was at the last uh, daytime parade that they had, and it wasn't real well attended that final year during the day. And they said, we got to change things up. And they went to this nighttime lighted parade, which has been a huge success. So it's going to be really great to be part of that. Yeah. And then in the spring, uh, you're going to have a trick or trick or treat. You're going to have an Easter egg hunt. In oh, the spring? absolutely! That was my very first event that I had, and I started back in 2008, doing it just for Down syndrome kids because my daughter has Down syndrome. And then when my grandson was born, the Knights of Columbus said, "Hey, you willing to open it up to all special needs?" 
And I said, well, if you're willing to help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So they, they let us use their facility until they closed. But yeah, it is kind of like boomed all through Lake Orion and Oxford and people look so forward to it. That's great. And where's that going to be, the Easter egg hunt? I remember I going to one at the United Methodist Church. Do you have a yeah, we tried to do it all around town, different locations, yeah. but I haven't found a venue yet that I was okay. set on. We're working on that. Yeah. If you have a venue in mind, let us know. For, for those for those that are unaware, what is, what's the foundation about and what is, what's like the reasoning for it getting started? I think that's important to you. You can take that one. Okay. <laughs> I did it as a way for, like I said, me to give back. But it started when my daughter was little, back in 2008. We took her to a local Easter egg hunt. And with her having the Down syndrome, she'd find one colorful egg and just be amazed with it, sit on the ground, look at it. <laughs> By the time she was right. done looking at it, the whole event was over. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And she was like so sad. So then the next year we tried doing it again. But my husband went out there and was helping gather eggs and the people running it were like, oh, absolutely not. Parents can't get involved. Mm. So I was like, okay, what can I do to make this different for all the special needs kids? And I always went to college for teaching kids under the age of five. So I've always had all the kids stuff at my home. So I just put up little child size tables and chairs with crafts at the children's park and just invited people. And there was only like maybe 40 people mm -hmm including the volunteers the first year, but they all loved it. And then the word got out and they're like, are you going to do that again next year? And then every year it's just kind of gotten bigger and bigger and right. bigger. It's awesome. That's fantastic. Now with the 501c3 status that allows you to do some fundraising now to help support these events, do you have any major fundraisers planned? We do. We can't tell you about them yet though. <laughs> uh, there's a few things that we're still trying to, to shore up. We're trying to make them as, as good and as big as possible. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to spill the beans too early. <laughs> well, people don't necessarily have to wait for the day of a fundraiser. Can they support the, the cause year-round? Yes. How do they do that? Um, besides our website, having all the information with a little QR code that they can just scan and it goes right to our donation page. Um, the Huntington Bank here in Lake Orion um, is doing the donation um, jar along with our QR code if people want to donate. And then we'll have local businesses around town that always have bins that they set up for me for people to drop off candy donations. Mm -hmm. That's great. When, when you host these events, what do you witness? Describe the atmosphere at these events and what you see. How, how do these people respond? Well, the kids are, are my main focus. I don't know about everyone else, but <laughs> I always watch the kids. Just They just light up mm -hmm. with enjoyment because they get to do their thing at their level with no judgment mm -hmm. and that is big with the special needs kids that is like the biggest thing right there is being included that's great because i had a woman at one of our last trunk or treats at the methodist church she said that her son always had to get brought along to his siblings events but part of the time he couldn't because it was just too overwhelming participate so she told her other kids, you have to come to his event now and sit. And I said, oh, no, no, we want them to all <laughs> interact together. I said, that's part of the inclusion. Right. But it gets to be at our kids' level. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a, a big variety of entertainment, but they don't have to do it all. It's a two-hour event, and everyone's like, wow, you have so much going on. And I said, yeah, but it's pick and choose because their attention span Right. And sometimes their sensory issues, mm -hmm. they can only do one or two things and then they have to leave. I said, so I don't want it limited to at this time they have to do one thing because if they choose not to like that thing, then the whole event was kind of a bust. So. Yeah. Now the picnic was held at Friendship Park. Now the trunk or treat is going to be held at Friendship Park. Talk about being able to have access to that pavilion, that building, that space. What does that mean to you? Oh, it's just been overwhelming because I um, reached out to the township and because they do a lot of special needs events as well, they decided that they would kind of partner with us to let us use their facility for whatever events could, you know, possibly be used there because like the egg hunt wouldn't be a good time mm -hmm. <laughs> because outdoors is definitely not a thing for it. But mm -hmm. so far the picnic and now the trunk or treat are going to be beautiful there. 
It's a lot more accessible too with all the parking spaces and mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the handicap ramps. Yeah, and you have access to the, the place and the yes. stuff that we were talking about. The mm -hmm. DAISY project provides so you could take advantage of those benefits as well. Yes, the kids so. absolutely love that. I don't, I don't think a single kid would come there and not run over to the place. <laughs> 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 exactly. What are some long-term plans you have? You host these amazing events. Is there anything else that you would like to start? Anything new that you want to create over the next year or two? Well, my wheels have been turning a lot. <laughs> and I got a lot of sticky notes everywhere with tons of ideas. And I just developed a little committee and we get to actually meet this Sunday to kind of go over that and get it all out there. So it will be coming to our website soon. Hmm. Now, um, people that want to get involved with these events, they don't necessarily have to be township residents. Who is invited to come to these events? Well, anybody that is on our Facebook page or sees our Facebook page that has a special needs child is more than welcome. We never turn special needs kids away, ever. Hmm. That's fantastic. But because I, I live here in Lake Orion and Oxford, and the people know me and know my daughter, <laughs> that's where we usually keep it. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the last few events that you've done, and it's just really amazing what you're doing in the community. Thank you. Uh, anything else we're missing? Anything, anything else you want to add? What do you want to say to the people watching today? Yeah, thank you. Every time you come to our events, uh, donate, sponsor, we appreciate it very much. Right. And, and the kids have an absolute wonderful time. And just to see some of the relief on the parents' faces as well, mm -hmm. because they get to kind of step back and see their kid not stressing. Mm -hmm. So That's great. Yeah. And your website one more time? It's AUSNF.org. Okay. And we have our Facebook page, which is AU Special Needs Foundation. Awesome. Great. All right. Anything else you got? No, I think that's it. It's right. awesome what you guys are doing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for coming out, and we'll do what we can to help you get the word out, and I'll be at Trunk or Treat shooting video this nice. year. I look Thank you. It's good to see you again. Yeah, yeah. That's great.